Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So I'm in the Audi this week and getting ready to pick up a part for the Buick. Not even a part, but a diagnosis tool that I know you all are gonna like. Especially if you have an 84 and 85 hot air and you don't wanna to upgrade to the 87 ECM, this one is for you. Keep watching. So as you saw from the introduction, there is a diagnostic tool in here, specifically the OTC 2000E. This is one of many scan tool options that was available in the late 80s and early 90s that will work on our cars. Now this will work on any Grand National, any Turbo Regal, anything from 82 to 87 will be covered with the components in this box. But this message is specific. The this message is specifically for folks who do not have the 86 and 87 ECM, who can't upgrade to the scan master. There is an option that allows you to read diagnostic codes and live data on your vehicle. Now, this is not a scan master replacement. This is more cumbersome to use than scan master. I, I will need to get that out of the way. So if you're looking for something that's going to be as good or better than ScanMaster, this is not it. But if you want to be able to access live data and diagnostic trouble codes without using a paper clip, without guessing or wiring additional gauges, this is an option that you need to know about. So this is the OTC 2000E. There are other options that will work for you. The ScanMaster MT2500, and the OTC 4000 are all scan tools that will work as long as you have the right cartridge and cabling. It will work for your Turbo Regal, Turbo Buick, all of that. So I'll get into a little bit more detail in a moment, but let's get this box open and see what we got. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn you around on this side so you can see what I see. All right, not bad. This looks really good. So we have our main control unit here, wires, is that a stand? Okay. I don't see how that works, but. see what cartridges came with it. I'm thinking this three in one is going to be the ticket. Let's see what's over in accessories. We have some additional cabling here. This looks like it'll work on a lot of vehicles. And of course we got owner's manuals here and additional cables over here. Let's see what we got here. Wow. Okay. So let me do some quick reading and we'll get into the car and show you how everything is supposed to look. So as soon as you open up this section, which is from the cartridges, you're going to see these cards. Now these are the cheat sheets that let you know what mode your car is able to transmit data from. There's GM PFI, GM Trans, GM Carb. For our 84 and 85 cars, we're looking for GM PFI. This is what we need. And let me let it focus right here, but you're going to see a various number of modes that you can select to get that information that you're looking for. You know, and not every option is available for every make and model. So keep that in mind. You're not going to have 63 options here, but you should be able to see the majority of these like RPM, you know, TPS, coolant temp, 
math, airflow. Those should be options that you're able to select and read information off of. So I'm going to keep this handy and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the car since we got it outside. Before I jump in and show you all the features of the OTC, consider liking and subscribing if you're new to the channel. I've rebuilt one Grand National and I'm on my way to my second. If this is the type of video that you like to see, let me know in the comments. If it's not, let me know why too. I'm always looking for feedback and how I can get better and how we can share knowledge. So with that said, let's get to it. So first off, you want to plug in the OTC right up here. The diagnostic port is right down here to the left of the center of the dash. So once you plug into your cigarette lighter port, you should get this message popping up, basically telling you to press one, two, or three for the manufacturer. If you're not getting power from that outlet and your see like your dome lights and your chime lights at the bottom of the floors don't work, then take a look at your fuse panel. There is a cigarette lighter fuse that I believe is a 20 amp. It may be the root for why that's not working. So we'll start off by pressing one for GM. Oh, I almost forgot. So I'm using the 1989 three in one. So please use that one. And also I have my PFI card right on the back here. So I can easily reference the functions and the modes that this unit has. Then I punch in my year, which is 84. Hit enter. And now it's asking me for the VIN number. You have to enter in the eighth digit, which is the number nine. Okay, I'm going to press two for 3.8. Press two for fuel injection. Now I get Buick 6 PFI. And now I have the chance to enter the mode. So I'm going to take a look here and I'm going to use number one. Then hit enter. And as you can see here, I'm idling right between 1350 and 1450. A little high, but it's all right. Now let's say I want to switch out of this mode and go into another one. I hit the mode button. Then I can take a look on the back and choose another mode. Let's go 43, which is the O2 voltage. See, this is a good example. 43 is unused, so I need to look at a different mode to see which one applies to O2 voltage. Number four looks like it would work for me as well. 21 may work for me. So let's keep those two in mind, four and 21. So we'll hit mode, four. All right, so now we have our, we have our O2s. And that looks like it's switching normally, right? It goes from a really low number to a really high number anywhere from a tenth of a volt to 0.9 volts is expected. Let's, let's try cross counts because that one is 21. Mm -hmm. 21 is unused. So unfortunately you don't have the cross counts that I would like to see. And that's basically how many times the O2 is switching between rich and lean. So to remove some of the guesswork out of picking which mode actually returns results, we'll just do this. We'll enter mode one and we'll use the scroll buttons here to go through each option. And as you can see, 31 is the highest that this car will go. And there's a few numbers in here that are skipped like 29, 21 through 27 is skipped, so on and so forth. So, only those options, once you line them up with the corresponding number on the card here, are available for our cars to read. Now, one big factor of that is because right now it's in road mode. 
it's kind of hard to see, so I'll bring it a little bit closer. As you can see, this is lit. And we'd like to come out of road mode so you have additional options. How we'll do that is this. We'll hit the mode button. We'll hit function one. And we have four for diagnosis states. Six for field service. And right now you saw road mode went off. We'll go back to mode one. And we'll start scrolling back from 31. As you can see, 29 is available. That wasn't available before. 21 is also available. That wasn't before. One way to tell that you're in the right mode, your check engine light should be flashing right now. Word of caution though, road mode allows you to drive the vehicle. Right now in field service mode, you should not be driving. So please make sure you're not driving on the road with this. You can have the vehicle running, but you should not be driving. So I have additional options available to me. And you can always refer back to your card and line up what you're seeing here. So 12 has third gear switch and fourth gear switch. And if you ever get into any trouble, like you don't understand what each mode is for, you can always refer to the book that comes with that cartridge and it'll give you some, diagnos some diagnostic information about what each sensor is looking for and why it's displaying in the mode that it's displaying in. It's also a helpful diagram beneath it and sometimes there's an alternative uh, data display. As you can see, there are two, two data readouts on, on each line item. As you're looking at your card, you may notice that there are two readouts, like two modes within each mode. And that's on purpose, right? As you look a little bit closer, number one would be showing you RPM and battery voltage. Number two would be coolant temperature and injector pulse width. And that correlates to what you're seeing here and here. RPM would be on the left and battery voltage would be on the right for mode one. Let's see if both of those are available. Right. So as it shows right now, RPM would be available, but battery voltage would not. Coolant temperature is available, but injector pulse width is not. That's the prom ID of your chip. And the no that's right here is trouble codes. So I don't have any trouble codes. And it just goes on and on from there. This one is O2 voltage on the right, on the left, I should say. So that's about half a volt. And zero goes for O2 cross counts. According to page 121 of the 1989 manual, field service, which is state six, should only be reviewed for diagnostic trouble codes and for setting timing. It should not be used for reviewing live data. So in that case, we're going to move over to state eight, which is the ALCL. And to do that, we're already in the mode menu. We're going to hit F1. We'll hit four for diagnostic state. And then we're going to hit eight for ALCL. Once we're there, we can resume the modes that are on our card here. And we'll scroll and see if there's any new data available. So 29 is available, 21 is available, 
we're getting more data here than we're getting in road test mode, which is great. Let me try to start up the car. So one of the reasons why I got this was so I can diagnose that hard start and that cutout when when the engine's cold. Once it warms up, it's totally fine to go, but it's really hard to get starting and running. So right here I can tell at idle, my TPS is reading 0.54 which is too high. You really want to be between mm, 0.42 and 0.48 at the very most. So I could tell one thing that I need to do right off the bat is a IAC and TPS reset. And that's basically getting both of those within the right parameters. For reference, the IAC is the idle air control valve and it basically opens up and allows air within the throttle body. And we were looking for that number to be between 10 and 30. I'll do that in a later episode. Right now, I just want to focus on showing you all the OTC 2000. As mentioned earlier, this entire right side should open up to folks who have the 87, 86, 87 computers or folks with other cars who have more capabilities in their computer system. Unfortunately, these things were not standardized like they were with OBD2, which as you can see is a great reason why we needed that global onboard diagnostic reference so we can make as much information available to the technicians and to all of us when we need them. So if you're looking for a cheap and easy to use scan tool that can kind of unlock some of the features and information on your hot air or turbo regal, the OTC 2000 is something that you should strongly consider. Between that, the Snap-on MT2500, and even the OTC4000, all great options. Now, review the Turbo Buick Forge. There's a lot of great information there on how to use it and other people who have run into situations that you might be running into, which brought you to this video. Otherwise, thanks for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. Talk to you in the next time. Hey, everybody. One more thing before I let you go. This weekend is Fall Carlisle. So there's an event in Carlisle, Pennsylvania every year, Fall Carlisle, be an opportunity to buy, sell, trade parts, and even just look at what's out there. I will be there this weekend. I'm heading down on Saturday, so I'll be there most of the day. If you're going to be down there, shoot a message to me on YouTube or Instagram. Let me know so I can look out for you. Hope to see you all there. Thanks for watching.